2 Kings chapter 15 tonight as we continue to go through 2 Kings. We're going to see we're going to go back and forth now. They're getting closer together, the northern tribe and the southern tribe. Of course, Judah, southern tribe was just Judah and a little bit of Benjamin. Northern tribe, which is called Israel uh, throughout First and Second Kings, is about ten and a half tribes. And so uh, we're going to look, open up tonight, 15-1, in the 27th year of Jeroboam, now, this is Jeroboam II, uh, king of Israel, northern tribe, Azariah. Well, let's look at it. Jeroboam, we mentioned, he's, he's, he's on the, uh, in Israel, the northern kingdom. You know what the Jeroboam means? Remember this? The people will contend. Isn't that interesting? Because I looked up what contend means in Webster's 1828. Don't look it up in a modern dictionary. It means to strive, to struggle in opposition with, or to quarrel. Well, who are they struggling with? Who are they striving against? Who are they quarreling with while they're apostate? They're quarreling with God. They're arguing with God. And who brings us peace? Christ brings us peace. We don't have to contend with God. We don't have to be enemies with God. We can come and believe in Jesus who died for our sins. And we can be at peace with God. But Jeroboam, the people will contend. Um, the second is king of Israel, those governed by God, although they're apostate. They're worshiping the two golden calves. Remember, Jeroboam. We'll get to that probably over here um, later. But Jeroboam was the one who rebelled after Solomon died against Rehoboam. And he said, what do we have to do with the house of David? And they went away and they built uh, two golden calves. And they've been apostate and worshiping them golden calves uh, this entire time. And God keeps sending the prophets. In fact, we've seen that in our last lesson that, that um, who was it? It was Amos and Hosea and Jonah and Isaiah. Uh, they're all going to be prophesying and bringing the truth of God and the word of God during this time. In fact, Isaiah 1.1 says in the year that uh, Uzziah or Azariah, that's another name. Second Chronicles calls him Uzziah, which means my strength is Yah or Yahweh. Azariah means Jehovah is my help or Yah is my help. So Uzziah, so that was, Isaiah opens up with in the year that Uzziah died. That's when Isaiah starts to prophesy. That's when he sees the Lord high and lifted up on the throne. So Azariah and Uzziah are the same person, the same king. Uh, and we will see that when we go over to 2 Chronicles 26 here in a couple minutes. He's the son of Amaziah, which means Jehovah is mighty. Jehovah is mighty. Now here's the, the, the hard thing is that typically when the kings would name their kids... And they would name them with Jehovah in the name. You could tell their heart and what they were doing. And yet we know the whole northern kingdom is apostate. But they think in their heart that they are following God. Even though they're worshiping these golden calves. Because they let the book of the law depart from their mouth. They're not following what God has already said to do. That this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth. But you shall... Uh, observe to do according to all that is written in it, then you shall be prosperous and then you ha shall have good success. You cannot rule or live for God unless it's according to what his word says. So there is a way that seems right in a man's heart, but its way ends in death. And so these kings are even naming their, their kids like they're worshiping God, but they know that they have these golden calves that they're following. And so we need to pray that God would open the eyes of our heart and that he would tear down the high places, which is what we're going to see here in a minute, that would be our master passion in our life, that would keep us from seeing what's going on, that would keep us from following God fully, even when we think we already are. See, we can think, oh, I'm good with God. Yeah, with Jesus you are. But what's keeping you from becoming the bride that you're supposed to be? What's keeping you from doing the, 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 the uh, thing that God called you for? 
What's keeping you from running in freedom? What's the, what's the high places? Watch this. Azariah, Uzziah, the son of Amaziah, king of Judah, praised, became king. He was 16 years old, verse 2, when he became king. And he reigned 52 years in Jerusalem. This is pretty interesting because I don't think any other king rules this long. Except for Jesus, who's on the throne forever. So 52 years, but there is, a, you know, like like with uh, 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 some of these guys that got records in sports with a steroids, there's asterisks beside their name. There's an asterisk beside his name. 52 years he was king. But we're going to find it didn't go well. It was only because of God's grace. Listen. 52 years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Jechaliah. Jechaliah means Jehovah is able or Yah will enable. And he did what was right in the sight of the Lord. Isn't that cool? That's a great testimony. He did what was right in the sight of the Lord. See, because that's what we want to be right with is in the sight of the Lord. You and I want to be right with God in his sight. Not what man is seeing and says, oh, they're good. and Oh, look at them. And oh, they're always there. And they're always doing that. It's not what man sees, the outer appearance, but it's what God sees, the heart. We want to do what's right in the sight of the Lord according to all that his father Amaziah had done except here's the epitaph of the southern kingdom except except they always did this that the high places were not removed why did the king not remove the high places the people still sacrificed and burned incense on the high places the king wants to be popular the king wants the people to follow him so the king thinks he has to let the people keep burning incense on the high places What's a high place? Well, in your life, it might be your master passion. What is it that you would go do that you would skip meeting with God? You would, you would hinder and, and maybe even sin because high places is elevation. High places is sin. The high places is the word Bama, not Obama, just Bama. It means to be high or an elevation. It means a wave. What wave are you following in Christendom? Are you being tossed to and fro by every new wave of doctrine? Or are you building a love relationship with God? Listen, because it's easy to follow the next new thing. It's easy to go, over here, we're doing that. Come over here. God isn't changing. He doesn't want you following waves. He doesn't want you to have high places in your life. Something that would be above God, that would be a master passion, that would keep you from serving God and meeting with God, and having a relationship with God, and you would put that first before God. God wants first place in your heart, and if he doesn't have first place, he might just leave the room. It's that simple. He wants the glory. He wants to be first. So we need to ask ourselves, what does the devil trick me into putting first in my life? See, and a lot of people, it is, it's earthly, it's earthly stuff, but it could be the government, it could be a job, it could be a career, it could be an education, it could be my parents, it could be the opposite sex. Something is there that sometimes just interferes and it becomes a golden calf. It becomes a high place. It becomes that which keeps you from the relationship that God wants so that his spirit is leading you at all times in the way you should go. Now, the good testimony is he did what was right in the sight of the Lord. But see, listen, when you don't tear down the high places, listen to me, this is very important. They'll come back to tear you down. If you don't tear down the high places, they come back to tear you down. What happened to the whole nation? They crossed over into the land of Canaan, and they were supposed to go in and kill all the ites. All the high places, anything that was already there, they were supposed to get rid of every bit of it, sanctify the land, cleanse the land, kill off all the ites in the land. They made peace with the ites, and the ites came back to kill them. The ites came back to even uh, kill their king, and we see Agag, and we see all of these, these, these Agites that come in later, and they become that which killed even King Saul. Because he didn't kill the ites and the lamb. We see that. We might get to that testimony sometime. 
So what's the high places? What's going on where you're still burning sacrifices? Incense, listen, this is um, incense. To burn the incense is to smoke or to turn into fragrance by fire, especially as an act of worship. You know, the incense that we've seen uh, is, is, is the prayer of the saints. When God sees that smoke of fragrance going up, he, 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 he hears the prayers of the saints. And yet there's things in our life where we're still burning our own incense, our own fragrance, our own smell on the high places. And I have a lot more to say about that. And we've talked about it before. Um, what's the high places that need to be removed? Because look at verse 5 just really fast without any anything all of a sudden you're at verse 5 he was doing what was right in the sight of the Lord then the Lord struck the king so that he was a leper until the day of his death so he dwelt in an isolated house and Jotham the king's son who was over the royal house judging the people of the land so see his son Jotham actually was ruling the land right and he was isolated. He couldn't be around, unclean. And, and this leprosy, leprosy is like, uh, it isolates you. And, and under the law, if you, anybody got near you, you had to yell, unclean, unclean. So he's isolated, separated from fellowship, separated from actually ruling, separated from actually being king. He's co-reigning, and his son is doing all of the things that he should have been doing. God struck him, smote him as the King James. It means he punished him or laid his hand upon him. It actually is a word for a plague, but it was leprosy. And leper, the leper there means to scourge. He struck him with leprosy and isolated. Listen to this. It, 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 King James says several, several. It's not something me and you use, the word Several. But it means a hospital. Prostration by sickness. He had to bow down to his sickness and obey his sickness and stay away from the royal part of the kingdom because he was unclean. Pretty interesting, huh? So he's co-reigning. And then it says in verse 6, Now the rest of the acts of Azariah... Jehovah has helped. <clears throat> Are they not written in the book of the Chronicles of the kings of Judah? So Azariah rested with his fathers, and they buried him with his fathers in the city of David. Then Jotham his son reigned in his place. Now listen, to be buried in the city of David means that you were respected. He was a good king until God struck him. He was a good king. He has a good testimony. Now, he didn't take down the high places. He's trying to be friends with the people. They're, they're still sacrificing and praying. But he got struck by God and chastised by God and was a leper. And see, sin is the same way. Sin will separate you. Sin will isolate you. Sin will put you away. And you'll be prostrated by the sickness of sin. And, you, and, and you'll have that as your master passion. And you'll be doing that. And you won't be able to fellowship and rule and run in the lane that you were called to run in. And be a king and a priest in the kingdom of God. And do the talented things that God wants you to do by his spirit for his glory. Why did he do this? Let's look. Second Chronicles 26. Would you already go in there, Michael? 26.1. I was just leading up to it. Listen. Listen. You're going to see that it was the grace of God that he reigned for 52 years. And he wasn't just killed by God. He was allowed to stay alive for those years and rule. Let's look, and I'm just going to read it, and we'll keep moving, and then we'll finish up with our lesson. But 26.1, Second Chronicles, gives us more testimony of what happened to the son of Amaziah. <clears throat> who was king for 52 years. And again, he's called Uzziah <coughs> here, which means my strength is Yah. Now all the people of Judah took 
Uzziah, who was 16 years old, and made him king instead of his father Amaziah. Now, that's strange in itself. The people were still deciding who was going to be king. And they grabbed him and said, no, you can't be Amaziah king no more. And so they actually co-reigned too. And you're going to see that this keeps happening as the nation, the, the, the southern tribe gets worse and worse. It becomes more like the northern tribe. It's a complete apostasy that you're going to see that this happens more and more. But when we get back to our text, you'll say, whoa, they're, they're not really as bad as the uh, uh, northern tribes because they're killing their kings left and right. Anybody that wants to rule, just kill them. And so death is reigning. When you don't have God on the throne and his wisdom, then death reigns. See, death reigns all of our lives when we were afraid of death. But now Jesus should be reigning. He's king and he's life. And we have life and more abundant and that more abundantly. But look, here we go. Uzziah, he was 16 years old. The people put him on the throne instead of his father. And look at these, these exploits. He does some great stuff for the country or for Judah. He built Elat and restored it to Judah. It was taken. And after the king rested with his fathers. Is after Amaziah did. Uzziah was 16 years old when he became king, and he reigned 52 years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Jechaliah of Jerusalem. We already got all that. And he did what was right in the sight of the Lord, according to his father Amaziah had done. He sought God in the days of Zechariah. What does Zechariah mean? God remembers. He sought God in the days of God remembers, or Zechariah, who was the priest, um, who had understanding in the visions of God, and as long as he sought the Lord, God made him prosper. That's a good memory verse right there, guys and gals. As long as we seek the Lord, God will make us prosper. As long as we seek the Lord, God will make us prosper. We want to hear the voice of the Lord. My sheep hear my voice, and they follow me. My sheep hear my voice. I know them. And they follow me. So we want to hear the word of the Lord and have the Lord um, lead us by his spirit. As long as he sought the Lord, God made him prosper. Think about that. Joshua 1 8. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth. But you shall meditate in it day and night. So you shall observe to do according to all that is written in it. Then you shall be prosperous. And then you shall have good success. As long as he sought the Lord, he was prosperous. He was safe. What are you seeking? Now he went out and made war against the Philistines. Remember the big enemy of Israel. He went out and made war. He went out and he's fighting the battle. He's trusting the Lord. He's being strong and courageous. And he's going out as king. And he broke down the wall of Gath. That's one of their chief cities. And the wall of Jabna and the wall of Ashdod. These are their chief cities. He's attacking the enemy. He's going and taking the battle to them. He's like, he's like get the sword of the Spirit and the word of God and let's go. And he's out there trusting the Lord and fighting for, Is for Judah. Um... And he built cities around Ashdod and among the Philistines. That's the enemy. God helped him against the Philistines. Notice where his help comes from. Against the Arabians who lived in Gerbel and against the Muonites. Also, the Ammonites brought tribute to Uzziah. His fame spread as far as the entrance of Egypt, for he became exceedingly strong. See this testimony of him? He's triumphing gloriously. He's triumphing because he's listening to God. He's following God. He's doing what's right with God. Even though we have the testimony, he didn't take down the high places. And Uzziah, what did he do next? He built towers in Jerusalem, at the corner gate, at the valley gate, and in the corner of the buttress of the wall. Then he fortified them. Also, he built towers in the desert. He dug many wells, for he had much livestock. Both in the lowlands and in the plains, he also had farmers and vine dressers in the mountains and in Carmel, for he loved the soil. Listen, he's, he's, he's planting, he's watering, he's reaping, he's fighting battles, he's building towers, 
He's living life for God and being the king that would take care of the land and take care of the people and would lead in a proper way, although he didn't take down the high places. <clears throat> so he's fighting war. He's trusting in the Lord. Moreover, verse 11, Uzziah had an army of fighting men who went out to war by companies according to the number on their roll as he prepared by Jael, the scribe, and Messiah, the officer, under the hand of Hananiah, one of the king's captains. The total number of chief officers of mighty men of valor was 2,600. And under their authority was an army of 307,500 that made war with mighty power to help the king against the enemy. Listen, it sounds a lot like in David's day. When David was defeating and destroying and taken back and standing strong. Then Uzziah prepared for them for the entire army. Shields, spears, helmets, body armor, bows and slings to cast stones. And he made devices in Jerusalem invented by skillful men to be on the towers and on the corners to shoot arrows and large stones. So his fame spread far and wide for he was marvelously helped till he became strong. Whoa, listen to me. Listen, this is good stuff. Really is. He's fighting. He's going out to war, but he begins to think he's a rock star. He begins to believe his own press clippings. He begins to think he's doing the work. He begins to be attacked by the devil in his own pride. See, he was as long as there was war and there's battles and the enemy was there, he was doing good. But when things started to go real well, he didn't handle prosperity very well. Listen, meditate on the book of the law and you'll be prosperous and good success. Some people can't handle prosperity. Some people can't handle good success because they begin to think that they did it. And they, they're no longer humble. They forget where they came from. They forget the stone that they were hewn from. And we're going to see that Uzziah was like this. But when he was strong, look at it, when he was strong, prevailing power. That's what strong means. He was the prevailing power. He began to think that he was the reason. See, we've seen that little tidbit in 7. God helped him against the Philistines. You always have to remember where your strength comes from. Because we're all going through warfare. Some people fight war real well. They're ready to stand against the devil. But then when they do good and they're being prosperous, that's where the devil attacks them, on the backside. They did good and now they get attacked in their pride and they think they're the strength. But the Lord says, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Put on the full armor of God. The Lord says, not by power and not by might, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. This is what we have to remember, that it's God's spirit. He has sent his spirit to prepare us as a bride to sanctify us, to cleanse us with the washing of the water through the word. It's his spirit that's leading us and teaching us and guiding us. It's his spirit that comes and seals us until the day of redemption. He was strong. He began to walk in his own strength. We're at, oh, in his heart, the middle of him, the very part that God wants. His heart was lifted up. We lift it up where? To a high place of elevation. See, we're to, Proverbs 4.23 says, Keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it flow the issues of life. And then we're told in, in, in Hebrews 11.6, Without faith it is impossible to please God, for you first must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Keep your heart with diligence and then diligently seek God. Stay in the book of the law. Stay in the word of God and stay close to God. Understand where your strength comes from, from God, from his spirit, his power, his might, from his truth, not from us. There's nothing good that dwells in us. In fact, we're supposed to be crucified with Christ. We're supposed to be in the grave and Christ living through us by his spirit as his spirit leads, guides, and directs us and takes us out for battle. We're supposed to stay in the grave. Nothing good dwells in the flesh. 
and the Bible tells us if we walk in the spirit, we will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. He was lifted up when he became strong in his heart and was lifted up. Listen to this. It means to be proud, to be haughty, to soar. He was soaring. He was flying good because everything was going good. He was winning. He was rebuilding. People were saying, look at this. He's rebuilding like David. He's ruling the kingdom. What a king we have. And he began to bring, believe the press clippings. And in his heart, he was lifted up to his own destruction. See that? To his destruction. To his ruin. His waste. His decay. That's where we go astray at is in our heart. When we don't stay focused on the word of God and our relationship with God. For he transgressed against the Lord God. He, who did he transgress against? God. It's trespass. It means to cover up. It means to act covertly against God. He knew what he was supposed to be doing. And it says that he transgressed against the Lord, his God. What did he do, Greg? He entered the temple of the Lord to burn incense on the altar of incense. Listen, you practice burning incense on the high places long enough, you'll think you can burn incense in God's house. Listen, he's a king. He's not a priest. Under the law, priests were consecrated. Under the law, priests were consecrated to burn incense. We're going to see this in the text. He went in. He, he gets so strong, he thought, remember what Saul did? Remember Saul was offering a sacrifice because Samuel delayed coming? And God said, oh, dude, you can't do that. But then he said, I'll give you one more chance. Go kill the Amalekites. It's cold. So Azariah, the priest, now watch this. Azariah, the priest, went in after him. And with him was 80 priests of the Lord, valiant men. See, you go in after the king anywhere, you could be killed. But listen to me. It doesn't matter who the government is. If they're not doing what they're supposed to do, you should be valiant for the Lord. Listen, you should do what God's called you to do, no matter what the governing people are doing. You should continue to walk in the power and the might of the Lord. He's in here doing what he should not be doing. And the man of God, the priest of God, calls him out for it, even though he knows it could be his life. And there's people backing him up because they all have a relationship with God. They're valiant men. And 18, and they withstood the king, Uzziah, and said to him, It is not for you, Uzziah, to burn incense to the Lord, but for the priests, the sons of Aaron. Remember the Arianic priesthood? Who are consecrated to burn incense. They're set apart. Listen. Do you know that we are a believer priest. And we're set apart. Separated to God. To do what? To pray to God. That's what burning incense means. He said my house should be a house of prayer. We should be praying to God. We should be before God. And prayer is, is, is oratory chapel or worship. We should be praying to God. And yet. He says, um, my people have not because they ask not. Or they ask and they use it amiss. They use it for their own selfish gain. So these priests, they withstand him and said, you can't do that. You know what the law says. It's for the sons of Aaron who are consecrated to burn incense. Remember the Arianic priesthood? That's where that came from, Aaron. Uh, remember, uh, you guys want to remember this. Remember when Aaron and Miriam come against Moses? I got a note somewhere on that. In Exodus, they come against Moses. Why? Moses married uh, uh, a woman. Out, what was she? I forget what she was. Oh, uh, 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 Moses married another another woman. And they started mumbling and grumbling in the, against him in the congregation. And what happened? Leprosy broke out on his sister, Miriam. Like, just like that. When he was against Moses. And, and Moses got on his face and prayed for her. And 
God said, leave her outside the city for a week because if you'd have spit in her face, she'd have been uh, unclean for a week. And who knows what that means, but <laughs> we could probably search it out and find some good stuff. Uh, but she broke out with leprosy. Now look what's happening here with Uzziah. They said to him, they, listen, this priest, priests have authority from God. You and I are believer priests who should be praying, and we should understand that God said, all authority has been given to me on heaven and earth. Go therefore. He sent us. He's told us to go with his authority. Listen, they said, get out of the sanctuary to the king. Get out of the sanctuary, for you have trespassed. You shall have no honor for the Lord God. You're not going to get honored for this. You're not going to get God's glory. You are not a priest. Then Uzziah, instead of listening to the word of God, he became furious. And he had a censer in his hand to burn incense. So what we're seeing is that he was going to do it anyway. He didn't care what the priest said. He's, remember, he's all exalted in his own heart. He's full of pride. He's doing what he wants to do. He's, he's taking a position that God has not given him. Do you know your position in the body of Christ? Do you know what gifts and talents and abilities? Do you know what lane you're supposed to be running in? Are, are you grumbling and complaining about somebody else instead of being faithful to God in your lane, where you're called to do, where you're supposed to be, where you're meditating in the Word and being faithful? That's all we're called to do is be faithful to God and do what He called us to do. Uzziah got lifted up in his heart, and he thinks he can go do anything he wants to do, and he gets out of his lane of king, and he wants to be the priest. Now listen, specifically, you, you can see the downfall of our country from this same thing. Our country is, is governed by a trichotomy, right? Three branches. They get it from God. God set up the king, the prophet, and the priest separately. Each one has specific duties, and you're not supposed to transgress them and go into the other ones. The only one that is a king, a priest, and a prophet is Jesus. He did all three of them, and he fulfilled them. Royal priesthood, yes, under Christ and us. But listen, so you have the executive branch, the judicial branch, and I got it in my notes. My brain went dead. Legislative. Legislative. Thank you, Cole. I knew somebody would help us that went to school. I didn't go to school. <laughs> <laughs> so, so listen, legislative makes the laws. The judicial interprets them, and the executive branch, the president, they enforce them. They, and, and it's on purpose. And then we become a royal priesthood, as my wife said. We are the priest under who? Jesus the Christ of the order of Melchizedek. And now that can be all brought together. But at this time, under the law, you're three separate ones. We are to be governed by nobody but God. There's only two governments that's God's government and the devil's government. Now, God in his government tells us to obey the laws of the land. We just discussed this a while ago. And you should obey the laws of the land until they tell you lies where you would be disobeying God to follow the government. So be very careful who you're yoked with in life. Because when you're unequally yoked and it becomes the way you take care of people, your family, and you do things, it's hard to get separated from them. That can become the high place in your life where you're trusting in what you're doing instead of trusting God. So these people take their life into their own hand by telling the government or the king of Judah, praise, get out of the sanctuary. He doesn't listen he's still doing that and while he was angry 19b with the priest he's angry with the priest are you angry with god for anything see a lot of sin can be traced back to bitterness and and, and frustration and, and not 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 believing god's promises you can be angry with god and sin be in your life because of it because you're angry with god he didn't do what you wanted him to do. He didn't show up the way you wanted him to show up. And you weren't content. Godliness with contentment is great gain. But we get mad at God. See, he's mad at the priest. And what happens? Leprosy breaks out. He's doing something he shouldn't do. Leprosy breaks out on his forehead. 
before the priest in the house of the Lord besides the, beside the incense altar. And sometimes when God didn't react the way we want, we get a little bit angry with him, and we have sin in our life, and we think it's okay to do it because God didn't do what I wanted him to do. He didn't do what I wanted him to do, so I can do this sin, and I just won't do what he wants me to do. And it's this little game that we play of bitterness, but really the devil is winning in it because leprosy's broke out, and it isolates you, and it puts you away from other people, and now you can't be the priest that you're supposed to be out doing the work of the ministry that you're called to do. So evaluate your relationship with God. Are you mad at him? Did he not do something you wanted him to do? Did he not react the right way? Leprosy. So see, we, and we're in 2 Kings chapter 15, and it just told us in verse 5 that he did what was right inside of the Lord until God struck him, until God chastised him, and leprosy broke out. But then we come over here in the Chronicles, and we find out why. He was disobeying what God said. He wasn't running in his lane. He wasn't doing what he was supposed to be doing. He got lifted up in his heart with pride, and God had to deal with him to bring him low. Listen, it's okay when God deals with you as a child. He will chastise you. He'll spank your butt. He'll bring you low. Stay low. Get back in your lane. Ask him, 1 John 1, 9. Confess your sin to him, and he's faithful and just to forgive you and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. He's never changed. He's not mad at you. He's not disappointed. He knew what was going to happen in your life. And so the only thing that's happened is your relationship has been affected, and you're not coming before him in the right spirit with the word of God to be washed and cleansed. Deal with bitterness. It defiles many. Verse 20, and Azariah the chief priest and all the priests looked at him and there on his forehead, what's it, forehead, really? Why wasn't it on his leg? Why wasn't it on his big toe? Remember when Moses said, here I am, send Aaron. And then God said, put your arm in here, the hand, you're doing his work. And leprosy was on there. And he said, to put it back in again and it come off. And it was a sign that he was representing doing the work of God with his hands. Well, head is power. And this leprosy breaks out on his forehead because it shows that now he's in his own strength and not in the strength of God. He did good when he was fighting the battles in the strength of God. When he was listening to God, being led by the Spirit of God, according to what God had called him to do, he's attacking the enemy, he's fighting war, he's doing everything right. Then he got lifted up in his heart. Now it's in his own head. He's in his own strength. He's exalted himself. And that's how sin happens in our life. We exalt ourselves. I hope that was clear. I got it. So he becomes proud and he begins to do what he wasn't supposed to do. He was leprous. So they thrust him out of the place. Indeed, he also hurried to get out because the Lord had struck him. Listen. He wasn't listening. He was called to be king. Look at the grace of God. He still is king for 52 years. Until he died probably of leprosy that killed him. But he says, my sheep hear my voice. I know them and they follow me. Are you listening for the voice of God to know where you're supposed to be in the body of Christ? <laughs> where you're supposed to be attending fellowship? Where you're supposed to be learning? Where you're supposed to be spending time with God to articulate and learn his voice? Or are you just bouncing around doing whatever you want? Oh, if I go here, I go there. Or I do this or I do that. Whatever I do. Listen, God is a God that, that, that gives grace, but he also has some exact things he wants to do in your life. The will of God. Are you finding out what the will of God is for your life? God struck him. 21, King Uzziah was a leper until the day of his death. He dwelt in an isolated house, isolated, separated. Remember what we've seen that isolated meant? Hospital, prostration by sickness. God brought leprosy on him and kept him prostrated before him in prayer the rest of his life. Because he was a leper, for he was cut off from the house of the Lord. Ah, 
can't go into the house of the Lord. Can't go in any even the right way with leprosy. Then Jotham, his son, was over the king's house, judging the people of the land. Now the rest of the acts of Uzziah, from the first to the last, a prophet of Isaiah, the prophet Isaiah, the son of Amos, wrote. So Uzziah rested. You, yeah, that's another book that we don't know about. Isaiah speaks of Uzziah, but it, we don't know what Isaiah wrote um, that this is referring to. So Uzziah rested with his fathers, and they buried him with his fathers in the field of of burial which belonged to the kings for they said he is a leper then Jotham his son reigned in his place we're going to end there um, and we'll pick up in 15.8 next week uh, going back to see the northern kingdoms uh, again and then we're going to go back and forth and back and forth and God's going to give us the testimony of them now the northern kingdoms are not listed in first and second chronicles those books we don't have of their historicity. But listen to me. What's the high places in your life? Some people call them a master passion. God is supposed to be first. He's supposed to have first place. He's giving you first fruits of your life completely. But we tend to have these high places. And, and, and they were characterized in the Bible by you had the temple in Jerusalem, and what they would do is they'd go up on a hill and they put this Asherah pole or something up that stood higher than the temple. And then they would go burn incense there and then show up still three times a day at the temple in Jerusalem or wherever they were worshiping at. And they would still worship God, but they had these other places that were really important and would even come before God when they wanted them to. And we're supposed to tear those down, tear them down. Let the spirit of the living God. See, that's what Jesus died for, to defeat the works of the devil. And high places are from the devil. He was elevated in his heart. He coveted the place of God. And in his pride, he caused rebellion in heaven. And then he brought it to Eve. And it repeats itself in bitterness. It repeats itself when we're mad at God. We can do things that See, we need to be content with what God is doing in our life. Are you content with the place you're at? Are you content with going out and being a witness for God? Sharing Jesus? Let him wash and cleanse you? Resting in the peace of God that he has given us through Jesus Christ? Tear down the high places. Stop sacrificing in high places. Elevated places. And you can go back and get the other tapes. We talked about this. All of the Christian music of today, most of them are, are mimicking this. Hill, song, elevation, worship. I mean, the devil mocks us in our face with the things that he's doing. And it sounds like good music, but it's leading us to a, a form of godliness which denies the power thereof. It leads us away from God instead of bringing us to God in our heart. It's singing about us. It's not singing ab about the praises of God, most of it. It talks more about us then and lifts us up. Oh, I feel so good when they play that song. Think about it, really. Think about what worship is. Now, I'm not saying you shouldn't be happy in the presence of God. You shouldn't be holy in the presence of God. You shouldn't be glad to be in the presence of God. But we have to be very careful I don't go to that church because their worship makes me feel funny. I, I don't go to that church because they don't play modern day worship. Oh, I don't go to that church because they, they don't play no hymns. We play hers. Oh, no, I'm teasing. That would be Asherah again. I digress. Listen to me. Be very careful what you're putting in your heart. This seems to be good, but it's really lifting you up instead of you bowing down and prostrating yourself before God in homage or worship. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for the examples uh, uh, and testimonies of the kings of Israel and Judah that we can look at and know uh, how we're supposed to thus live in Christ Jesus. Lord, we know that we stand in your victory. And it's not by power or might, but by your spirit, saith the Lord. So, Father, we pray that you would help us to surrender our lives to you and tell others about your son, Jesus, about the blood uh, that he poured out 
for the salvation of the world, for the sins of the world. Thank you for your mercy and your grace. We give you praise. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. The Lord bless you.